Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and today it's that time of the week where we're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. So let's check them out. All right, just like last week, we're starting out with a Knife Center exclusive, uh, but unlike last week, it's only one new exclusive this week, uh, as opposed to a few. We've got the new or our new version of the Hogue Deca with these red lava G-Mascus G10 scales. Look at that bad boy. How cool does that look? This still comes in at the same price as the standard model, which is just over 140. For that, you get that really great 20 CV blade steel, nice thin stock and really good geometry for slicing. Narrow, narrow out there near the tip with that swedge. So it's got a nice, uh, nice bit of agility and fine capabilities there near the tip as well. Just a really nice blade shape. It is about three and a quarter inches long. I don't know if I mentioned that yet. Just a really good general size for EDC, not too small, not too big. And I love the stone washed finish, as you all know. I love the way it hides scratches with use and I just generally like the way it looks as well. The handles, like I said, they look good. Uh, they call them g mascus but it's essentially just G10 with kind of that random patternized uh, look in there. So each one's gonna look a little bit different in terms of the reds, the blacks, and a little bit of gray that peeks out of there as well. But they've all looked pretty cool, everyone I've looked at, certainly. As far as length of the handle, it's just almost a four finger, just barely a four finger grip for me, holding it, you know, using the, uh, the index finger groove there to guide my hand position. But I have used one of these uh, a fair bit. I usually find myself choking up just a little bit over the front of that, uh, that finger guard there to get a nice, real solid hold when you need to push through something. And you're gonna be able to push, something, push through some things really nicely because of that excellent blade geometry. Got a standard pocket clip with two screws that is reversible, and you get a, a block out plate on the opposite side as well. Open back to construction, and Hogue's crossbar lock, the Able lock which is probably my favorite crossbar lock out there these days. There's just a smoothness to Hogue's execution of this lock that I find very addicting. It's silky, uh, almost a slightly more luxury feel than some of the other crossbar locks out there, if that makes any sense. It's just fantastic. Plus, I love it for its ambidextrous qualities, works really well in a left hand, even though I'm not a lefty, I have no problem manipulating that. And because of that reversible clip, if you are a lefty, it's gonna work out well for you guys too. Um, but yeah, really cool right now. Knife Center exclusive, 140 bucks, made in the USA. Just really, really nicely built. Now if you're uh, looking for a similar style of lock, but you want something a little bit, a little bit bigger, but you don't want a lot of weight, the Spyderco Manix 2 Lightweight has always been a good option. And we've got a new version right now with Spyderco's new proprietary powder metallurgy steel, Spy 27. Uh, so it's a little bit bigger. This knife comes in uh, right about the same price, made in the USA for 140 bucks. Now it's actually been a little while since I've, uh, I've looked to see what people are, uh, are performance-wise are getting out of this Spy 27 steel out there. Um, but from what we've been seeing before, it should be somewhere in the same kind of ballpark um, as stuff like S30V, S35VN, probably. Uh, don't take that, uh, my word is gospel on this at all. Uh, it's still a very new steel on the market, even though it's been out eh, a little bit now. Um, but if anyone out there has had uh, experience with this steel, make sure to let us know in the comments your thoughts on it so far. Uh, but good, uh, good premium level steel for sure. 3.4 inches of blade, just about. Spyderco blade shape and grind full flat, as you would expect, just a great performer for all kinds of slicing and utility needs with some nice uh, nice tip utility as well. Now the handles here, uh, on all these Spy 27 models, they've had a, a cobalt blue coloration, um, but those are with uh, FRN handles. This is an FRCP, which is fiberglass reinforced copolymer. Um, I think it's a little bit lighter actually than the, uh, the standard FRN, but they couldn't get the color identical with this material, so it is a, a little bit different here. Um, but part of that uh, that lightweight nature, despite the size, this knife comes in at just three ounces, so definitely a lot of capability that's not gonna weigh you down too much at all. Like Spyderco's FRN knives though, we do have bi-directional texturing, so you've got resistance in both directions off of that center piece there. So you've got a solid grip in wet, slimy, oily conditions, that sort of thing. Just enough handle length for me in the standard grip there, but you do have that choil for the choking up in this case. 
We've also got a wire pocket clip here. It's not a, a fold over deep carry style, uh, but it is gonna, gonna hold quite nicely and look pretty good on the outside of your pants. And for the locking mechanism, we've got their ball bearing lock, which rather than a crossbar running through, you've got a ceramic ball bearing that uh, is pushed forward with, with a spring into the tang of the knife holding it shut. And you've got these tabs kind of around that ball bearing to make it a little easier to access. You can certainly do the flick kind of like a, a crossbar lock, maybe not quite as nicely, but you can still get it done or just open it one handed and close one handed that way as well. But solid, solid design, exciting new steel to check out. And again, for a USA made knife at 140 bucks, you got two really great choices here to pick from. I've got a couple more new Spydercos. We've got the new bird's eye maple version of the Chaparral Taiwanese made knife coming in just over 160 right now. Chaparral, great EDC uh, sized knife, uh, under three inches of blade. So it's uh, at a critical measurement there. Blade length here is about 2.8 inches. CTS XHP, American steel. And I just love across the Chaparral range, the edge geometry or the cutting geometry. Very thin blade stock, full flat grind, razor sharp, of course. Just really, really great cutting characteristics going on here. This is a smaller knife uh, than that Mannix, but you still have that finger choil there, which for me, it's just enough to let me get all four fingers on this knife when choked up like that. And then it's gonna fold up nice and small in the pocket as well. Wire clip again, folded over, so it's uh, almost deep carry. You got a little bit sticking up but it's uh, definitely not anything uh, frightening looking sticking up. You got this real nice and classy looking bird's eye maple, which is really cool to see uh, a company like Spyderco doing a, a non-stabilized wood like this. Um, the, you, you don't see that too much, but the results I think speak for themselves. It looks great on a great platform of a knife already. What's not to love? All right, next up we've got one more Spyderco and jumping to another one of their knife making regions. We've had the US, Taiwan, and now Italy with the new Pata Dese, and these come in just over 200 right now. Blade shape here is very much inspired by the Patata style knives, which is a uh, Sardinian, I believe, yes. Um, so it's cool to see an Italian knife pattern from Spyderco, but still being made by an Italian knife company. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool, or an Italian knife manufacturer, I should say, made in Maniago. Again, nice thin blade stock, not quite as thin as that Chaparral. Um, let's see, what are we uh, exactly? We're at uh, 2.5 mil on this one, uh, but still with a full flat grind and very nice, very nice slicing geometry. Really acute tip on the Patata style of knives and no exception here. A lot of agility and a lot of fine capabilities there in that fine tip, but you've still got pretty much, well, there's a little bit of straight edge, but it kind of acts like a big long belly on this knife. So you've got a nice long slice capability on this as well. G10 handle scales, they're a little bit contoured. Folded over, almost deep carry wire clip, which is reversible, but the lock is a liner lock, so it's right hand biased. Uh, it kind of, to my eye, it looks like it's fairly far back on the handle, but it works quite well. And it lets you hit, uh, hit that opening hole right where you need to to get kind of that signature patata blade shape going on. But it's a really cool design and another really cool entry into Spider Coast Ethnic Knife series. There's some other cool stuff. I think the Watu from last year was uh, was really interesting. So it's always love seeing those entries from Spider Co. All right, next up we've got a new Kaiser and it's a new version of the Mini Sheepdog with as you can see some uh, some tweaks here. No more flipper tab. Instead, we have a thumb opening hole. And I wasn't sure if you just in uh, thinking about the concept, how it would work, but the execution came together really nicely. It's a little bit cleaner here on the back since you don't have that flipper tab and still plenty of hold to, uh, to uh, bring it out on that thumb cutout. You can even do the, uh, the middle finger flick pretty easily. And then you've got a, a cleaner look when it's open too. You might be able to even get the cutting edge, you know, a little closer to some things because you have a little more clearance there without the metal sticking out. Came together really nicely. And this is one of their Vanguard versions. Uh, so this comes in uh, a little less expensive, $69 right now with a 154 CM blade. Uh, interestingly though, you still get contoured handle scales here. Most, most of uh, their Vanguard line comes with a, a flat handle scale. And that's one of the things that differentiates them from the higher end stuff. 
but you still get the, that nice uh, ergonomic consideration here. Three finger grip, but again, because of the shape and the contouring especially, it definitely locks into my hand quite nicely. So you feel like you can put this slightly more aggressive or beefy blade to some heavier tasks if you needed to. I wouldn't feel like you're, it's gonna kind of slip out of my grip at all. Black stone wash finish on the blade, black micarta for the handles has a real nice look when taken together. You've also got a single position pocket clip, right side tip up only, and an inset liner lock. And interestingly here, um, well, I guess not interestingly when you consider it's a Vanguard level, uh, no ball bearings in the pivot, these are washers, but the action's still very good as you can see. All right, next up, another new knife from Kaiser's Vanguard line. Uh, coming in at 64 bucks, this is the Carlos Elsner uh, Junges Flipper, which isn't, uh, you may be thinking, isn't a new knife, but this is kind of like that, uh, that mini sheepdog is blurring the lines a little bit between their Vanguard series and their more expensive stuff. Uh, you can now get this knife with ball bearings in the pivot rather than the washers. Uh, and it still comes in at the same price. So this version right here, we've got green micarta. There's also the, uh, the black G10 available. A blade just over three inches, N690 steel in this case. Good solid performance. Uh, Non-inset liner lock in this case. Flipping action feels very good. It's a nice snappy deployment as you can see from the flipper tab. You can also use the, uh, the thumb studs as well. Also feels excellent. Now, in terms of the flipping action and how it compares, I pulled one of the old non-ball bearing versions here um, and just taking a, a quick flip. Yeah, the, the ball bearing version definitely has a little bit of a snappier feel, but I guess if anything, this goes to show how well-tuned their, uh, their washer-based flippers have been because, man, there's nothing wrong with the flipping action on that as well. It's only when you, uh, when you put it next to the, uh, the ball bearing version that you can tell the difference. But in any case, it's a cool knife design, very aggressive blade shape. It's not at all my style, but I do like it. Um, just cause you've got that very aggressive tip. You can get up there with your fingertip if you need to uh, kind of shield the point from some things, but it's just a pretty cool design overall. All right, next up, we've got a new Kershaw. This is the Turismo coming in at about 46 bucks and definitely one of my favorites from their, uh, their newest of 2021 releases so far just because I love the shape overall. It's got a nice flow to it. Uh, materials wise, they went with D2 for this blade and kept it just under three inches and gave it that you know, full flat grind and that modified Warncliffe shape. It's just gonna be a great, great utility knife shape overall. We've also got a very nearly deep carry pocket clip, which is reversible, stainless steel frame lock, as you can see. And I believe, oh, I thought this had a PVD coating uh, but uh, it is not. <laughs> now, as far as action, they're kind of doing the same thing CRKT is doing with their new assisted opening knives and that they're pairing those, uh, the ball bearings, KVT in this case, with a spring assist. And the action is pretty darn good as you would expect from any of Kershaw's speed safe assisted knives. We do have a small flipper tab here, nestles in very unobtrusively there, which I like, but still flips open quite nice. And then it's disappeared in the handle essentially. So you don't have that sticking down, kind of like that, uh, that Kaiser, although you do have the flipper tab in this case. I think my favorite way to open this knife though, is because you have this fuller and the, uh, the blade cut out there, it's actually really easy to give it just a little push with your middle finger and flip it open that way. So that's, uh, that's kind of cool from an assisted opening knife. So like I said, nice and affordable knife uh, at that price. Did I mention it? Just over 46 or just under 46 right now. And I really love the lines. Uh, another folder that I really love the lines of this week is not a budget option. This is the new Chiburkov Urbis coming in at a $650 price point right now. Um, but yeah, check those lines out. Very cool. Blade is just over three inches, M390. Little bit, uh, not super thin, but you've got that full flat grind there. But the handle is where it's at for me. You've got a very complex, highly refined shape going on. As you can see, a lot of swells and contouring in some really nice places and goes a long way to making a very comfortable knife handle, which is something you don't always, uh, you can't always say about most folding knives. This one feels really nice. The handle is titanium, but it's not slick because you've got all these uh, essentially milled lines in all kinds of different directions. You've got contrasting directions, 
wherever it kind of comes in for another bevel. You've even got these really broad thumb scallops here on both sides. Now the pivot does stick up a little bit from that, so it's not like a perfectly seamless thumb scallop, but you can still get a really nice pinch grip on those when you need it. Frame lock, as you can see, really fine cut out with some milling around it, has a nice look, lock bar insert as you would expect. And then we've got that milled pocket clip as well that sits just off of the lock bar. So even if you're uh, gripping that when you go to open the knife, you're not gonna impact the opening action at all. And speaking of that opening action, again, like that Kershaw, very subtle flipper tab here, but flips open really nicely. All right, next up, we'll come back down in price just a little bit, uh, but we're into the fancier stuff now. Uh, coming in at about 350, new Terrain 365 Mako flipper. Uh, which comes with their Teravantium, which is a dendritic cobalt blade material rather than steel. Uh, really high hardness and really high edge retention going on here. Of course, it's still a useful shape overall, just over three inches, a little bit of a harpoon point there. Um, not a hugely deep kind of harpoon cut out here, but it's still nice to kind of put your, uh, your index finger there on if you're choking up to use the tip or pushing down with your thumb. I mean, my larger thumbs here kind of fill up that space as you can see. But it's got a good shape for utility, full flat grind, a cute tip, sensing a bit of a theme on the on some of these things today, um, just, but just really nicely done. Handles here are titanium. And one of the things that you, know, you never see in pictures is, well, one, it's hard to see contouring a lot of times. Uh, on the website, our pictures do kind of make this look a little bit flat because it almost is but there's a little bit of a contour there. And one of the nice things they've done is right here around kind of the index finger spot, the contour is a little deeper, a little taller than around some of the other spots. Flipping action's quite good, as you just saw. And But anyway, what that contour does is it, it's just a little bit better. It, it gives you a little more wrap around for your index finger in that spot, a little bit more comfortable. And it's something that's real intuitive to do if you're uh, if you're kind of making a fixed blade to kind of bring that up, but you don't always see that uh, that done uh, on folders especially, but from a lot of production companies at all. So I really appreciate that, and I never would have noticed that if I hadn't picked one of these up in person. But let's go back to that flipping action again. That was actually really good. Ball bearings, nicely sized flipper tab there. Man, it just goes as you can see. But frame lock there for security, milled pocket clip, right side, tip up only. Really exciting blade material here as well. Check it out. All right, now for the most expensive knife of the week, we have a new Dominator V5 from Daryl Ralph. And if you're looking for oversized, hard use capable pocket jewelry, I don't think uh, anyone doesn't quite like Daryl Ralph. Check that bad boy out. Uh, it will set you back though, uh, 1150 bucks for this guy. Not quite a truck. Not quite, not quite Thomas's new truck price right there. So uh, from that respect, it's cheaper than a new truck. Or it's cheaper than a new old truck anyway, right? No, well, new to me. It's new to him. <laughs> but his truck doesn't come with ball bearings. He got ball bearings here. <laughs> but yeah, just check that guy out. I, I almost swore again. I almost said it was bad. Blah. You know, bad A, but I'll, I'll use that moofery word again. Check out the moofery on display with this guy. Uh, steel is 20 CV, three and three quarters of an inch, compound grinds, as you can see. Still a useful blade shape though. There's a hint of recurve here. Yeah, just a little bit. Nice broad kind of cut on the spine there. Really good for choking up, doing that sort of thing. Fingertip work there when you're, uh, if you're trying to drive that tip a little bit differently. Handles are brushed titanium in this case, but the edges themselves are kind of polished. And then you got that carbon fiber inlay on the front and back as well. We've got kind of a, a glass breaker pommel on the back, but it's highly polished as well, at least on the spine section. So it's not quite like a sharp thing. So it's not gonna dig in as much. It's actually a good thing, but it's still gonna give you that nice point to concentrate force as well. And it's gonna give you a little bit of a, kind of broad jimping here if you, if you're needing to kind of palm the knife and do some things with it, you got a little bit of traction there too. One of the other nice little touches that's gonna to be hard to see uh, on website photos is the insides of the frame uh, are jeweled actually. There's, uh, there's some sheen going on there from some detail work they did on the inside. They didn't just leave it nice and raw. Um, yeah, just a really kind of big moofing knife there. <laughs> Flips open quite well. Check that bad boy out. Now if your taste in customs runs a little more refined, 
Uh, this next knife might be your thing. This is the new Warncliffe versions of the Jerry Moen Mongoose Flipper. Uh, this one comes in 875. Blade here about three and five eighths. We've got a Loki Damasteel blade. Uh, so you've got that powder metallurgy construction for some really nice performance. We got a nice acute tip there, really sharp edge, you know, despite the slender kind of executive knife profile, it's got a lot of aggressive cutting capabilities built into this design. Piercing, of course, is gonna be really nice as well. Um, part of the way when you, when you hold this knife, the tip is, uh, well, it's a Warncliffe, so the tip is a little down already, but there's a little bit of a downward cant to the blade as well. Just really nice and really intuitive to point the tip of that blade where you want it to go. Got a honeycomb machined handle here with a PVD coating. Looks really good, I think, next to that Damasteel, but we've got a couple handle options available right now. Milled pocket clip, we've got a zirconium, I believe it's zirconium, uh, but we've got the ball bearing there on the end for the retention point. Inset liner lock and some nice flipping action as you'd expect. I've always liked the way these, uh, this design kind of folded into itself and that's certainly still the case here. It's got a nice teardrop profile that looks really good. And yeah, it flips open pretty good too. All right, we've also got um, another Jerry Moen Mongoose, the new Mini Mongoose Pocket Fix Blade. These, comes in, these come in about 295 right now and they indeed come with a leather pocket sheath. So if you like to EDC a, a fix blade, you guys know uh, I like to with my Nordsmith Skipjack. It's kind of set up very similarly to this. Got that nice pocket clip there. So just a little bit of the, uh, the handle that fixed blade sticks out above your pocket line. So it's easy to grab. It's not gonna go floating around in your pocket. You'll be able to access that, no problem. This one's a little stiff because you know it's not broken in yet, uh, but they will break in a little bit as you use them. But check out that cool little guy. Blade shape more like the, uh, the original Mongoose with that kind of recurve drop point, but the tip is still nice and dropped. It kind of has that striking Mongoose look going on. Uh, we've got RWL 34 blade steel in this case with a two and a half inch length. Um, RWL 34 actually is the, uh, the powdered version of an ATS 34, uh, which is similar to 154 CM. So it's kind of like CPM 154. I'm a nerd, it's fine. I know some of you guys are too and you wanna know these things. Um, and we've got titanium handles here as well. Honeycomb pattern here, but we do have a, a few different options on that front as well. Um, I actually, uh, as I'm kind of holding this and, and imagining cutting through some things, with that blade cant and that recurve, nice aggressive little fixed blade shape despite being a two and a half inch length. Uh, with that downward cant, I could see this really ripping through some cardboard no problem, which you know I, I wouldn't normally do with a two and a half inch knife. But as you're going through cardboard, cutting through a longer cut, as you can see, the tip's still down. So even though you've got belly, a little less likely to slip out. And in fact, if anything, as you get towards the bottom of the cut, it's if you're you know kind of coming in on this side of the belly towards the heel, it's actually going to push the cardboard into that recurve section and give you a lot of shearing power as you cut through. So a lot of a uh, lot of interesting applications for this knife, uh, even if uh, you might use it as a letter opener more often than not. Got some really cool, uh, really cool utility baked into that guy right there. All right, last but not least, we've actually got oh. Not quite last, but last, not least. I forgot to show you the uh, the pocket fob, a uh, little lanyard fob for that Daryl Ralph. You got that skull bead right there and a, a paracord braid there. that You can add to that Daryl Ralph if you want. There's that nice broad, uh, broad lanyard spot there. And a, uh, what's that, a Damascus pocket clip on the back? Forgot about that too. Um, so now, last but not least, we've got a three-piece kitchen knife set from Jake Hoback. Uh, coming in at 925 right now, which um, is a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but actually when you're considering um, the, the high-end production, uh, I don't think these are full-on customs, uh, but the high-end production and the materials here for three premium chef, uh, kitchen knives, it's not as bad as it sounds at first blush. Um, but we have the, uh, the standard, I would call this more of a chef knife, but he's calling it a Santoku, that's fine. Um, M390 steel on all of these guys, and he still, you know, because it's Hoback, he still wanted to, it to kind of have a little bit of his signature tactical flair, which is why he went uh, with this black finished blade, uh, which is a PVD coating, so it's nice and smooth. It's not gonna impede 
uh, your cutting as you, uh, as you actually use the knife. And I really think these are gonna be pretty good users in the kitchen, actually. Uh, the balance on this Santoku is excellent, actually. Right there on the, uh, the standard pinch hold, right in front of the handles, it's extremely balanced, as you can see. I'm not fighting that at all. So even though you've got you know, a full-size blade, this is an eight inch uh, Chef Santoku knife, <laughs> Chef Toku, perhaps. Uh, even though you've got a full eight inches, you're not fighting the balance of it whatsoever. Kind of in a, a mid-height flat grind, there, um, uh, not the uh, not the thinnest blade stock, but actually it's, it's fairly thin blade stock. I think the geometry is gonna work quite well on this knife. Handles, carbon fiber, you've got some interesting shapes going on here. Um, even in a standard hold like this, it's not like the most comfortable, but honestly, you're not really holding a chef knife like that anyway. Um, if, if you were, I would kind of get rid of some of the flat spot there on the bottom, but really you're doing a pinch grip like that and wrapping your fingers around the bottom and it feels really good in that type of grip. And you can see also, just if you hold it at the right angle, you've actually got carbon fiber pins in this uh, handle as well. So it's got some mechanical adherence uh, in addition to whatever kind of epoxy he might have used on there as well. Also included in this set is an Usuba coming in with a uh, about a six and a half inch blade here. A little bit thicker as you can see, but same materials. Uh, other than that, slightly shorter handle. Uh, and this one intended for a bit more kind of heavier chopping needs, uh, heavier or larger fruits or vegetables for sure. Got a little more strength there. Um, but one thing to note, this is a double beveled knife as opposed to the uh, traditional Asuba, which is a single bevel knife. So keep that in mind if you are interested. But the balance here is a little more uh, blade heavy in this case. Um, so you might be able to do some kind of hacky choppy cuts Kind of like a meat cleaver, but you know, not quite. This is M390, so it's it's very durable. But I don't know. I would feel a little nervous about really like chopping, like in the uh, fixed blade chopping sense with M390. Um, but it feels nice and solid. And then rounding it out is a small utility knife, uh, the uh, the Hanasuki coming in with a five inch blade. Everything else all the same. It's got the same size handle as the Asuba, so a little bit shorter than the, uh, the big Santoku. And one of the things they all have is you've got essentially a scallop on both sides here at the back. I think this comes into play for my hands or in my grips most on this utility knife in certain grips. I'm, I find myself um, going there a little bit more, um, especially in a grip like this, because you do have a little bit of a drop to the edge, so you could do some small chef-y ta chef knifey tasks with it. Um, but it is a, a pretty straight edge, uh, so you're not going to be rocking too much. This is going to be more of a push cutter. Same thing with the, uh, the full-size Santoku as well. It's going to be more of a, a push cut style of usage overall. But they feel really good, they look really good, and if you've been looking for a, uh, a tactical kitchen knife set, definitely worth a look. And that is it for the new knives this week. Make sure to let me know your favorites down in the comments as always. And again, as always, if you wanna get your hands on any of these, we will leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. While you're over there, make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program too, because if you're gonna spend your money on one of these knives, might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.